you are now listening to episode 20 of the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Craig. In today's episode, we are talking about allostatic load and having rocks in your backpack. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com. Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Dr. Taylor Crick from the Real Health Podcast, coming to you with our latest episode, and we are going to be talking this time about a concept called allostatic load, okay? So if you've listened to the past episodes, you've heard maybe uh, the stress episode, you've heard the stress workshop, this might be a term that you've heard before, so allostatic load. We're always going to be talking about rocks in your backpack, okay? So if you're joining us for the first time, this is the Real Health Podcast, and like I said, I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick. I'm the owner and operator of Align Utah, which is Salt Lake City's premier wellness facility, specializing in spinal corrective Uh, structural spinal corrective chiropractic care, advanced nutritional plans, supplementation, weight loss, detox, and looking at it all through the five essentials of maximized living. But this concept of allostatic load is really, really cool. So uh, some of you may have heard of the term of homeostasis, and that is your body always trying to stay at, at a regular level, always trying to always trying to regulate, okay? So always trying to regulate itself. That is homeostasis, and that's where your body, you know, it it always is fighting to be out. Now, allostasis is anything that causes your body to not be able to regulate. So anything that moves you away from your set point or anything that adds a stress to your body. And now this concept, this term is coming from Dr. James Chesna, a mentor of mine, that uh, he, he, he's used this term and he says it's like rocks in your backpack. Okay, so allostatic load, what we're going to talk about today is your allostatic load. Okay, and those are rocks in your backpack. And so picture if you're carrying a backpack around and we just keep adding rocks, adding rocks, adding rocks to it. Well, what's going to happen, you know, everything's going to get harder. You may have heard me say before that unless you're trying to drown, everything is harder with rocks in your backpack. You're just adding more weight. You're just getting weighed down. Everything is harder. That's what an allostatic load is, is your overall, the cumulative effects of all the stress that you've had in your life. All the different things, physical, emotional, chemical. So we're not going to get into the different types of stress. You can go back and listen to past episodes for those. But one of the things that I really want to illustrate today with allostatic load and the rocks in your backpack is, you know, how can somebody, and and especially from a chiropractic perspective or from a healthcare perspective, you know, we see this all the time. How can two people seemingly be very, very similar and one have you know, a, a, almost you know what would be considered a miraculous uh, result from an adjustment or from a, a dietary change or things like that, and the other person see almost no change. Okay, so let's talk about that. Two people, everything given the same. You know, same age, same gender, same demographic. You know, our genes are obviously not the same. I'm not talking about two identical twins, but let's say two women that are both 45 years old with chronic migraines and an autoimmune condition and, you know, et cetera. But say, say their measurements on their spine, for example, are identical. They have the same curve in their neck. They have the same uh, relative angles between each of their vertebrae. They have the same amount of degeneration. They have the same measurement of forward head shift. They have the same range of motion that's been decreased. Say they've both lost... 10 degrees of, of lateral, lateral flexion to the left and 10 degrees of rotation to the left. And seemingly the exact same. You put their x-rays up next to each other, you can't tell who is who because everything seems the exact same. So why can one person perhaps come into my office, get one adjustment, and have an amazing response? You know, we've had people in our office with one adjustment 
no, no longer wet the bed. We've had people no longer get vertigo. We've had people, my gosh, I mean, you know, headaches gone right away. I've had people cancel surgeries after one adjustment. But then I've also had people who come in and they don't respond that well. And they don't, you know, it takes a series and it takes a long time. And sometimes maybe they never get to the same point that somebody else got to really quickly. And you think, well, how is this, how is this happening? This person, you know, seemed so young and seemed so healthy and their spine moved so well. And I really expected you to respond like the other person responded. And, you know, we're always looking for this. Or, you know, maybe that's a good chiropractic analogy, but maybe you know somebody that, did the master's cleanse or something they found online and they lost like 10 pounds in five days or something crazy and you did it and you gained a pound. You know, you didn't have the same results or you know somebody that took this supplement and had an amazing response or you know somebody that did this weight loss program and had an amazing response. And so why does one person's body respond differently than another's, okay? And so the easy thing to jump to is, well, we all have different genes, okay, genetics. And, and genetics do play an incredibly important role. We can't downplay that role, but your genes, they found, uh, is not everything. You know, they found that as little as 2 to 5% of chronic disease is actually caused by genetics. The most, the biggest number that I've ever seen is 25%. The other three quarters to 95% is caused by your lifestyle choices and the things that you do that pull pull the triggers on those genes. Because we all have good genes, we all have bad genes, but not all of us get the same diseases. And this next, the concept that we're talking about today is what's really going to make the difference, and that's the concept of allostatic load. So what allostatic load is saying is that every stress response that your body goes through has a cumulative effect. Okay, and so what that means is that the wear and tear that your body's going through has a cumulative effect. Okay, and so the easiest example of this, or one example I should say, is that if you consistently sprain your ankle, say your left ankle, you sprain it once, okay, then it heals, you sprain it again. Is that going to be more severe or less severe than the first time? Well, it's most likely going to be more severe because some of the damage that was done the first time is not permanently repaired. Some of those ligaments are stretched. Some of those joints might not move the same way that they used to. And there is permanent damage. There's cumulative wear and tear on that sprained ankle. Okay, so that one makes a lot of sense. But that is what happens with every stress response that we go through. So say you've gone through, you know, maybe now you'd say, oh, my life is pretty stress-free. I'm doing pretty well. But say maybe in the past you've, you lost both your parents at a very young age. Incredibly, incredibly stressful. That's a huge allostatic load. That's a rock in your backpack. And that has cumulative wear and tear effects. Maybe you've gone through a divorce or maybe you've gone through multiple divorces. Maybe you worked a decade in a hard job, in a stressful job. Maybe you only worked a week in a stressful job and you moved on. But all those things add up to your allostatic load. And every single one of us is going to have a different allostatic load. We play a video in here from YouTube a lot that is an emergency room scene. And it's somebody getting pushed in and it says, 32-year-old, heart attack. And the doctor says, how did that happen? And they trace back through this person's life. And they keep going back through and through and through. And they go all the way back to when the person was a baby and the mom's feeding him French fries. And she says, I know it's not good for him, but it's the only thing that will make him stop crying. And that's exactly how that happens. The doctor says, the emergency room doctor says, how the heck does that happen? 32-year-old heart attack. Well, it, let me tell you, it did not happen overnight. It started from birth. And that is the thing with all of our diseases, all of our you know, health issues and our allostatic load and, and why we may respond differently to something than a friend of ours is we all have a different allostatic load that started from birth. And so the important thing is, is maybe you've got a really heavy backpack. Well, you can dump that backpack. You know, you don't, it's not permanent, 
but it, it is, you know, some of that is some of that is permanent, that wear and tear, that cumulative wear and tear. But you can dump some of those rocks out. But the most important thing is to understand how allostatic load works so that you can stop adding rocks to your backpack. So here's what happens is, you know, your body goes through what's called a stress response, okay? So the stress response is what's called the acute response to stress. The stress response in and of itself does not lead to any adverse health outcomes. It's actually protective, but each time the stress response is activated, adjustments have to be made, and over time, this leads to accumulated wear and tear, and that is the theory of allostatic load. So what happens is it's also going to trigger inflammation, and there, you know there's what's called... Um, there's what's called primary mediators or primary medi- mediators of the stress response. That's something that we've talked about in past episodes like with adrenal fatigue and adrenal burnout. That's measuring the actual stress hormones that are released from the stress response. So that's things like cortisol, things like DHEA, epinephrine and norepinephrine, dopamine. Those are the primary mediators of the stress response. But the secondary mediators, the secondary outcomes, what's going to happen if you've got a prolonged stress response or it keeps happening, those are affecting things like the immune function, your metabolic function. So things like high cholesterol or high triglycerides or you know bad blood sugar regulation, your cardiovascular and your respiratory system. So things like uh, increased inflammation, C, you know, CRP is a big inflammatory marker that a lot of you guys have had measured and, and have come back high, uh, those are all signs that you have a high allostatic load. And so they're actually able to measure some of these things and put together how high your allostatic load is. So that is one of the things that I just want to talk about is when you do anything for your health, when you try to actively you know, decrease your stress, when you try to you meditate, you do your deep breathing, you avoid things like alcohol and caffeine, you regulate your sleep cycles, you do things like that, what you're doing is decreasing your allostatic load. So I want you to think of it as not how stressed am I on a Thursday night or on a Monday morning or on a Saturday night, but think about it long term. That's what this concept of allostatic load is going to help you do with your stress and your stress response is start to think about it longer term. What is this doing? Am I adding a rock to my backpack? Am I taking a rock out of the backpack? Why am I addressing this stress so that we're not continuing to add rocks to the backpack? The other thing that I want you to start thinking about with the concept of allostatic load is how everybody's body is completely different and everybody responds completely different. We all have different genetics, first off, which is going gonna, is gonna to set the stage for your allostatic load, for your stress response. It does set the stage for it. But like I said, there is a lot of other factors that play a much, much bigger role, like your spinal health, like your toxicity, like your nutrition. All those things play a much, much bigger role than your genetics do. But look at it from a long-term standpoint and say, I'm adding these things to my backpack. But also think about it as everybody's body is different. This is why perhaps somebody's going to have a miraculous result while another person doesn't. This is why perhaps somebody's going to lose 20 pounds in 30 days where another person takes them three months. Okay, So this concept of allostatic load can help explain a little bit why you have some of the symptoms that you're having, why you have some of the results that you're having with some of the things that you've tried. We see patients come in all the time that are stressed to the max and they'll try, you know, they'll implement our eating program and they'll start getting adjusted and things and they're frustrated because they see these videos of other people in the office that lose 20 pounds in their first month and they think, well, I haven't lost any So what is the explanation? The explanation is understanding this concept of allostatic load. You just have more rocks in your backpack. you got to be that much more committed, that much more bulletproof on what you're doing, on your lifestyle changes to get those rocks 
out of the backpack. So just a little just a little short episode here to talk to you about the concept of allostatic load, how you can stop adding rocks to your backpack, why one person might have a, a seemingly amazing result while another person has one that's, you know, seemingly insignificant is because we're just chipping away at the allostatic load the rocks in the backpack. So I hope that taught you something today about your stress, about what it's doing to your body, but also about how your body is designed to heal and function overall and what can interfere with it. And that's exactly what allostatic load does. So I hope you learned something. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick. This is the Real Health Podcast. I'll put some links in the show notes because this was a shorter episode. If you want to do some more reading on allostatic load, you want to look that concept up, you want to learn more about the rocks in your backpack. You also, if you want to look up or find out a little bit more about what what rocks do you have in your backpack, maybe you don't even know it. Maybe you don't know what some of them are. First off, go back and listen to some of the past episodes. That's going to teach you a lot about the toxins, the heavy metals, the uh, your body's inability to detox, a bacterial overgrowth, subluxation of the spine, all these things. Maybe you've got some rocks in your backpack that you don't even know were there. But also, feel free to email us. Feel free to call, and we can help you find out where some of these sources are of allostasis or where some of these rocks might be coming from so you can stop loading yourself down you can start lightening up your load stop carrying around such a heavy backpack and make your life a little bit easier start getting your body healing and functioning the way that we want it to so as always dr taylor crick here with real health bringing you the most cutting edge information on healthcare today trying to help you be the strongest and healthiest version of you so look forward to talk to you guys next time And signing off, Taylor Crick. Thank you for listening to the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com. 